One of the first things you encounter when doing CAM with Infusion 360 is your tool tab. In this video, we will go all Martha Stewart, give you an overview and get that tool library organized. And then in the end, I want to show you one of my favorite functions called templates. This will make your whole tool selection just smooth. Hi everybody, my name is Lars Christensen and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. So today we're going to talk about the tool library when doing CAM with Infusion 360. So I want to give you an overview and I also want to kind of like show you how I suggest that you're using this. Now before we get to it, as always, I love your comments and suggestions down in the comment area. I know many people read them and I can assure you that I read them all. But let's jump into the software here and attack this tool library. So the first place you normally encounter the tool library is when you go in and create a tool path. So if I go up here and select the facing operation, the first tab is always your tool. And when you go in and hit select tool, you will get the tool library displayed like you see on the screen here. Now there is actually another way to get to this same screen. And it maybe makes a little bit more sense now where we are going to encounter or talk about the tool library. So let me just cancel out of this cancel out of my operation. Right up here, you have also a button for the tool library. So the way I'm picturing this is the tool library is kind of like the toolbox you have out on the shop floor with your different drills and mills and so forth. So let me just give you a quick overview over the tool library here. Now, starting up in the upper left, you have a button up here where you can hide or show this library tree and I definitely prefer to always have it open. I'm going to come back to this in a few minutes. Next, you can import a tool library. You can export a tool library. You can duplicate a tool library. So kind of like make a copy of it. You can create a brand new tool library. You can delete a tool library. And then we kind of like jumping over to the section here where we can create a new tool, a new tool holder, a turning tool. We can edit the tools we can renumber the tools and we can delete the tools. And we're gonna kinda like get into some of these different things as we're going through here. Then down at the bottom, we kinda like this whole area here is like what I call our working space. And then over here, we have kinda like a display of our tools. So let's start by talking about libraries. I think this is the most important thing to kinda like get a grasp on. So you have here something called documents. And if I just hit the the little triangle next to it to expand it. This is where your document files are stored. Now I'm gonna come back to this in a second. Then you have a bunch of samples that comes with Fusion 360. You have some vendors who have also imported their material into Fusion. And then you have something called local. Now let's start from the top and work through these. So like I said before, documents, this is where you have your files that you're working on. So right now you will see we have two different files in here. There's a machining setup and there's an Xbox controller. The reason you see two is because I have two files open right now. So let me just X out of the tool library. You will see here's the machining setup. That's the one we see on the screen right now. And if I click over here, you will see that here is an Xbox controller. Now I'm going to use this one when I show you the cool functions inside of templates. So it is important to remember that your tools are associated with your Fusion model. What this means is that if I program a part and I use all different kinds of tools and I send you the file, all those tools will come with the file. It's a little bit like if I programmed the part and I showed up at your door with the stock to machine the part and all the tools and I said here, Here's the package. So there can be a difference between the tools inside of the document files and inside of the toolbox that you have on your shop floor. So the tools you have in your documents is the tools that is associated with whatever model you have open in Fusion 360. What local libraries resembles is the tools that you have in your toolbox on the shop floor, so your end mills and your drills and so forth. Now the mistake that most people make is that they are inside of the file that they're working with within documents and they're creating their tools right inside of this environment, meaning that any new tools they create are only stored in within that Fusion file. So when they later on are going to program other parts, they kind of like have to redo the same steps. 
What I recommend you do is instead you create your tools within your local and in here you can create different types of tool libraries. So for example, here I have one that I call 6060 one in Lunamom. Now there's no reason to panic if you're weeks or months or years into Fusion and you have only been creating tools within the documents files because they are within those files and that's fine. So you don't have to start over. You can just start from scratch here and start creating those tool libraries. So let me just give you a overview of what we have in this work window in here. So you will see inside of my 6061 Illuminum library, I already have some different tools created. Now within here, uh, I have some ball end mills, I have some drills, I have some flat end mills, and you can actually filter through here because this list of course can become very long over time. So if you go up here and you click type, you will see that I get a window here where I can narrow it down. So if I, for example, select something like drills and hit okay, you will see that now it only display drills. Now, if I go back and I click on that field and it also says that I want to show flat end mills and hit okay, then you will see that my flat end mills also show up. Now at any time you can of course clear out by just hitting the X and you will see everything in here. You can also search for dimensions and anything else that you have in here. So for example, if I, if I search for spot, you will see that my spot drills appear. So this is a very good thing to kind of like just filter in this down. Now first here, I want to create a new tool for you. And then I want to show you how we can create new tool libraries. So if I want to create a new tool in here, I have a couple of different options and it really depends on what you prefer. I could either go in here and click up here and say, I want to create a new tool because I have the, the library active here. So this is where the tool will end up. So if I click on that, I will be sent it here with the dialog box is where I could start going in and changing things in here. Now, another option that might be preferred is to actually use the sample tools that comes with Fusion 360. So the sample tools and the vendor tools over here comes predefined with Fusion and you can go in here and you can borrow the tools or copy the tools from in here. So if I go into the sample and I click on this here, we will see all the different samples. Now, in this case, I'm gonna fill the down. So I'm gonna go in and select a flat end mill. And the one I'm looking for here is actually a half inch end mill. Now I could either fill it down here or I can see here that I have a flat end mill in here. Now what you can do is you can drag and drop that tool. So if I drag it right over to my local 6061 aluminum here, and I now click on that, you will see that I now have a half inch flat end mill in here. Now, when you have done that, you probably have to go in and do some edits. So I'm going to go in here and edit my tool. So I'm just going to right click and hit edit. Now it already specified um, what tool it is. So I can go in here and specify the material. And I like to take the time to do this just because this tool library, you know, I'm going to use this for years. So it makes sense that I kind of like just takes a step here. So this is, oops, this is a carbide end mill and I want to cool it on. I'm going to use inches, free flute, great for aluminum. You can put in here the vendor. So this is going to be a lake shore and I can put in a ID for that cutter, whatever that is. So now it's easy, but I got to re reorder it. In here we have the description. So that is good, a flat and, and mill, but you could customize it. So maybe this is one you call a regrind, or maybe this is one you cleared on a grinder. You got your diameter, you got your shaft diameter, flute length, so one inch, that's good. Shoulder length is good. Body length and overall length. Now you do have some shaft uh, dimensions in here. So if you wanna create custom tools, you can actually go in here and modify these tools. Now, the third tab is your tool holder. And there is some advantages to assign a tool to your end mill, even if you're swapping them out on a regular basis, because I'm sure that you're only using one or two different type of holders. The neat thing about it is if you're ever doing anything like surface machining or something like that, you can actually take the tool holder into consideration when it comes to collisions. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and select the holder, and you will see that Fusion comes with a lot of different holders in here. Again, you can create your own holders if you want to. Now in this case here, 
I'm going to go in and select the Mari tool holder and you will see how I get a little preview, whatever I select. So I'm going to select an ER32 holder here and hit OK. The next tab is my feeds and speeds. Now I'm going to do a video on feeds and speeds in a few weeks. Um, but really what we can do in here, we can put in our surface feed, we can put in our chip load and it will come up with your feeds and speeds, whatever you use in here. Last tab is your post processor. What you can actually do in here is you can assign a specific tool number to your tool. So this really depends on what kind of tooling you do. So like I used to run a Haas mini mill and then had 10 tools inside of it. So what I would do is I would swap out my tools in and out all day long. Now with that one, you know, sometimes you have in 10 mil sitting in pocket number two, sometimes it's in pocket number eight. It really depends on how, you know, what you're cooking that day. But I also programmed a Matsura that had like over 200 tools in it, over 200 tools in the tool carousel. Now at this point, you don't swap tools in and out. When a tool goes in, it stays in. So it's really nice that you can assign a specific tool number for that specific tool. And you can do that right here in the last tab. You can also in here turn on if you want to do manual tool change so that many of you guys, you know, need that function. So it will come up with an M01. Or if you have a something like a Renishon probe on your machine where you want to ch uh, check for tool breakage. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So now I've just added a half inch end mill free flute for aluminum in my 6061 aluminum library. So this is the toolbox that is sitting out on the shop floor where I'm going to go and grab my cutter for my job. So let me show you how this works in action. So if I go out of this, if I go up here and select a 2D adaptive clearing operation and I go into my tool, you will see that up in my tool library, all is highlighted. That means that I see everything in here that is checked. Now you can uncheck things in here. So this can be a nice filtering if you know you're never gonna use any metric tools from the sample library or you don't wanna see this li sample libraries at all, you can always uncheck these things over here. Now over here in the area, I see the tools that is used inside of uh, the machining setup. So this is the existing tools within this file. My sample library. Now if I just click down on my 6061 aluminum that you saw before, it will filter right down to this library. And here I have my two, my, here I have my half inch end mill. So let me select that because that's what I want to machine. So this is what you need to remember when you're machining in here. Go down to your local library. That's the one you want to go into when you're selecting a new tool. So I'm going to select this tool and now I can go ahead and select my operation in here and it will use that half inch tool for this operation. Now again, you will see since I have a very stoppy holder that I'm probably happy that I do have the holder appearing here because it will show that I am going to collide between the holder and the tool. So this is one of the other things, really nice having that tool holder on there. Now let's go back into the tool library. So I have my 6061 aluminum tool library, but what if I want one on D2 or any other materials that I'm cutting? You can either right click and say duplicate tool library, or you can also walk up here and you can do duplicate up here. So now I just duplicated the library. So these two libraries are now the same and I can now go in here and I can just rename this and maybe I call this my D2 tool library. All the tools from the 6061 aluminum have now been duplicated into the D2. Now I will of course have to go in to the tool library and change the feeds and speeds because it's D2 and I possibly also want to use other type of cutters like fall flute instead of free flute because it's steel. Now I talked about before that I used to program a Matsura that had over 200 tools in it. So what I would do there was actually create a tool library just for that machine. So I could of course take any of these libraries here or create a brand new library within here and just name that library whatever 
your machine is. Now I have a new library just for that machine. Now enough of local libraries. Let's jump up into the documents and I just want to show you a couple of tips in there. So if you're looking at the file that I have available on the screen right now, you will see that it's pretty neat that it shows what operations that specific tool is used on right now. Now, of course, one of the things that many people ask is how can I renumber the tool? So let me just minimize it here. You will see that right now we got tool number one, tool number 11, 35, 59, 83, and 107. Nobody just wanted one, two, three, four, five. There's two ways you can do this. You can either highlight the operation and you can right click and hit renumber, renumber tool library. Or you can go up and hit the number up here, renumber tool. Same dialog shows up. And now you have full control on how you want to renumber these tools. So now you will see it goes from one through six. So just a quick recap, what is inside of your document folders, those tools are only associated to that file. This area here is where you store the tools that you are going to reuse. Now then when you are programming your part, you go in and you select out of those libraries, what tools you want to use. So I hope that this overview of the tool library makes a little bit of sense. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to use templates because it's kind of taking this whole thing and making it a little bit more smooth. So in this case here, I have programmed part of this mold core here, and you will see that I have different operations created over here to machine this part. Now, if I click on the top one and hold down shift, I can select them all right here, uh, all the operations. Now, if I right click, I can actually store this as a template down here. Now, what happens when you store as a template is you're capturing all the tools, feats and speeds, step overs, lead in, lead out, everything is stored inside of this template. So what I can do now is if I go to another file, for example, this Xbox controller, I right click on the setup. I can now go in and say create for templates and you will see here I have Lars's 3D milling. So now what I have in here is all the different operations that I copied all those settings from. So now I can actually go in here for, for example, the parallel toolpath. I can go and I can edit it. It already had that end mill that I used on my other part. So I know the feeds and speeds and the step overs are good. And maybe all I have to do here is going in and selecting some geometry that I want to machine within like this. So go and get your tool library set up. Make sure that that's from where you're picking your tools, not the document files. And then start using templates. It's a really neat way to capture all the intelligence that you have already figured out out of the machine. So really hope that you like this video. And if you have any tips or suggestions, put them down in the comment area down there. Many people read them. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. And then also don't forget, click to get the free CNC handbook. There's some really cool information in there that is free for you to read and use. So until the next time, have an awesome day.